two, three. Cause I'm a dig deep, I'm a stand tall, I got the grit of the underdog. I'm stronger than you think, I can do this on my own. There's a difference between loneliness and doing this alone. Hello and welcome to the DC Music Rocks podcast presented by the Capital Group Collective, elevating the voices of the DMV music scene to the world stage, one conversation at a time. Um, we're, wi- we're highlighting the wildly talented DMV artists, and we believe that they're paving the way to, um, to uh, diversity of genre, gender identity, and community. Today, I, I'm your host, Stephanie Mathias. Today, we are with Allison Rogers and Preeti Feltz. They are members of the band Zen War- Warship. And um, really excited to be with you guys. I was just listening to your album. It sounds really cool and excited to have you here. Hi, everyone. We're happy to be here. Oh, thank you. So um, I just kind of want to like get it, get right into it, find out who are you. Like, tell us, um, tell us who you are, who your band is, and you know, how you formed as a band? Um, sure. So the band was formed by um, three guys, uh, Tyler uh, Moselle, Phil Marnell, and Roberto Gerberti. And um, they found um, another a horn player named Ben um, DeVries. And they, the, and they had a couple of other people in, their, in the band. Um, and together they, they were... Um, um, making songs and just jamming and stuff like that, that, that led to, um, some gigs, um, and they started to build up a little bit of a buzz. Um, at one point, the previous drummer, um, left and a few other people left. Um, so the band was in transition at that time, Phil, who wrote all the, uh, song lyrics, and he was this lead singer at the time. He went back to his um, true love of drumming and he became our drummer um, and I was found to be uh, the lead singer after um, they were looking for a lot of a few um, candidates and luckily they picked me so um, I've been in the band since um, 2018 as the lead singer um, and then we added some additional horns um, around I say 2019 early 2019 and that's when we got Allison on board. Um, she's our main trumpet player right now. Oh, really? And, that's great. Yeah, yeah so I stuck. I like... stuck. I stuck. So that's good. <laughs> no, I mean I loved no, the trumpet Allison... in your album. That was like, I loved that yeah. so much. So we had Ben on trumpet in our album too. He he moved to Canada um, to um, get for a job, but he was able to. Um, provide some of the um, tracks for some, and because he wrote a lot of the parts too. And so the way that we work is we all contribute to songwriting. And so some of you can see a different, you know, some different styles based on who's in that the explains band so much. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. I, um, I, I do. I want to know. Well, first of all, how how would you describe your genre um, of mm. music? It's like in your your bio, you say that you're a rock slash funk band um yeah but i also like on for facebook sure. i saw your description that you have a little disco a little of yeah. other things i mean i joined the band uh i'm allison the trumpet player uh <laughs> i joined the band because i really wanted to find you know a band i could play trumpet in but that wasn't sort of your traditional big band because i wanted to be able to play for my friends at, you know, bars and clubs and play the kind of music people can dance to. And so a lot of times when people ask me, you know, what is Zen worship? We might say, oh, we're a little bit of the police, you know, mixed with, you know, a garage rock band mixed with a funk band, um, little Richard, you know, throw it in there. But mainly what we like to say and what we really want people to take away from our album is that we play danceable music, that Definitely. there's something everyone can listen to and connect with. You know, a lot of our songs have a dance beat to it. Others, you know, definitely we have a few more, you know, rock ballad types of tunes. Preeti's voice on bluesier numbers are amazing, but every single song, you know, you, we want you tapping your foot. We want you dancing. So we like to say that, you know, that's really the core of our music. Love it. That's 
incredible. And your album that was just released on December 11th, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Please tell us the title of that album, where sure. we can find it. Um, so Allison, like Allison said, um, our songs are, you know, primarily dancey-ish songs. So the title of our album is Anything That Grooves. Love it. Um, and you can see that's pretty much the common element on our tracks is yes. that um, they're pretty funky. Um, and they, you you're not going to be, you're not going to be crying to our songs. Yes. <laughs> no, no. no. These are, this is not a breakup album. No, it's, <laughs> I love me. this. This is what I just, this is like perfect way to like groove into 2021. Right. Like, yeah. That's what we were thinking too. Maybe you'd be crying if your feet hurt from dancing too much. There <laughs> <I know. laughs> Um, yeah. But you can find it basically anywhere you can stream um, Spotify, Tidal, um, Amazon Music, YouTube. I think I probably looked up every place just to just to look at it, you know. So, um, um, so pretty much it's available anywhere. Um, Fantastic! Anything that yeah. grooves by Zen Worship. Okay, that's we fantastic. do love. We do love if you'll go to Bandcamp. You know, musicians listening out there know that that's where. You know, if you're gonna get credit that's where you're going to get it. So for people who are willing to go to Bandcamp and check it out, we love to see it. Preach. Absolutely. That's awesome. Um, yeah, no, I mean, I, I really did. I enjoyed this album very much. Um, like if I had to describe it, it's like the grooviness of DMV, you know, of DC music where, you know, you got a little bit of funk in there and it's groovy, but also yeah. with like the, my husband is Mexican and I have like, I, he's a huge fan of music in general and so I've listened to everything that he listens to and he loves like ska music and so mm -hmm. I heard a lot of ska because of there yeah. is a lot of ska there's there's a lot. Lot. Okay, good. No question. <laughs> okay. I mean because I was like I didn't see that in your description but I heard so much ska in this like the trumpet and the the rhythm yeah look whenever you have brass people are gonna think of ska music yeah. but also <laughs> some of our tunes kind of have a more reggaeton backbeat to it. And yeah, you know, you that gives off ska vibes. So I don't think that that's inaccurate. That yeah. being said, some of our tunes, you know, for example, our bass player, you know, he loves like heavy forward music. So some of our tunes are a lot rockier. So yeah. we don't like, like to well, just say we're ska because there's a horn, but a lot, I've had a lot of fans and people say there's yeah. a lot of ska vibes in your music. Yeah. So like, that's what I was thinking. I was like, okay, I've got a little bit of funk, a little bit of ska with like the attitude of system of a down. Like you know? <laughs> Tyler <laughs> like, would love that. Tyler <laughs> guitar player would love that. Yeah. <laughs> so, sure. um, yeah, so I actually like really lo loved this album and thought it, think it's fantastic and, and I like um, to enjoy say, the energy of it it's just it got such a good yeah vibe. totally and you know Phil are who wrote a lot of if not all the lyrics I know that Preeti has had a lot of input since she's joined the band and cool things are constantly evolving but Phil you know he loves I know he has some musical theater influence and he's kind of he's basically a poet and so unlike maybe your popular dance tunes that are out there, a lot of our songs have stories to them. They really mm -hmm. are like character driven, sort of like a Steely Dan song might be. Um, and so that is a whole other angle. I right. love that you said that it's very DC music. I, I definitely feel that way. Yeah, well, I'm really glad you're too. here. Because we, you know, one of our songs um, in particular is about the former mayor uh, Mary and Barry, and um, mm -hmm. we do tend to get a good response for that song. And I personally really like that song a lot because it's um, it's you know just some out outside of DC. I think we have everybody has an idea of um, Mary and Barry, but there's people you know lived here for so long, and um, I personally came to DC during um, Mayor Barry's time. So like many years, many, many years ago. So um, just like highlighting some aspects of his career and time that are different from what you generally um, hear about him. Like that's just sort of an example of how we took some, a message that is sort of like a DC message that we are you know, thinking about and put it to music that's sort of danceable. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, and I noticed there is a lot of political statements in the in this music and this and in this yeah. album um I I guess that you know jumps along my list of questions to um you know uh 
do you have any like social causes? Are, are you trying to com convey a political message here or, or are you just, um, you know, expressing what's come to mind or is there a cause that you guys are, are personally or as a band? As a band? <laughs> Um, I mean, obviously, I guess I, I you know, would want to know personally, but th I know that this this is a band that's comprised of me, mm -hmm. but I, I do want to know, I think I'm more interested to know, like, as a band, you know, what, what are you trying to, to convey or, or if there's a cause that you guys are fighting for? It's funny. Wait, let me jump in on this one. Have you seen the new Pixar movie, Soul? Yes, I did. I watched it with my husband and seven-year-old daughter. We did see it. Yeah, I loved it because I'm a... I'm a, I can't, I come from the jazz school. So it was nice to see that genre highlighted. But in any case, I don't know if you saw in the movie, but there was yeah. in fact a Zen worship. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh my gosh. You're right. There was that, that ship, you know, going and they're, they're searching for souls, right. To bring them out of the vacuum. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe yeah. I mean, we were first, just me, you know, <laughs> that would be great. For, for the record, we were first, but, um, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's a bit cliche, but I think every time, you know, you talk to any of the band members, we've been on a few other podcasts, radio, things like that, we're asked, you know, what's the message of the band? Mm -hmm. And the message that our album puts out there and that we're trying to put out there is music is really rejuvenating. And, you know, we want to put out positive vibes in the world and we want to treat each other with love. And there's so much hate. Um, there's so much, uh, so many people out there dropping the ball on just that message, being kind, that we just hope our music reminds people that of what life is really about, which is, you know, taking the hard times, taking the tough times, taking the heartbreak, taking government failures, you know, feds don't fail me now. And, you know, turning into something positive and you know, dancing away your worries, relaxing and getting empowered, powering yourself up again to get out there and be a good person in the world. And it's very universal. And so I don't know if that's really a political message. I know individually, each of us are very engaged in politics. We care about issues like you know, child poverty, immigration, uh, um, international politics. I'm a civil rights lawyer, you know, we're policymakers. Phil was a teacher, you know, Preethi works in healthcare. And so we all obviously have our own personal causes. We've done fundraisers that Preethi can talk about at one of our latest mm -hmm. gigs. Um, yeah. But as a band as a whole, we're trying to put good vibes out there, remind people that there's good things going on in the world. Preethi, do you want to talk about our recent fundraiser? Yeah, sure. Um so we did, we've done a couple of fundraisers at this point. Um, so, but our last one, we were, were we did um, a gig at Jam and Java outside. So this was like in the fall and we were raising money uh, for equal justice initiative. And I think that was, um, we were able to raise like $500. So it was really um, awesome that um, we were able to contribute in that way. Um, in the past, we have, um, we have also um, done fundraisers for um, immigration. Um, and I personally, um, a few years ago, I um, organized a concert at Rock and Roll Hotel with a bunch of bands. Um, and that was for a Sanctuary City DC um, movement. And um, that was also well received. So I think that we, DC is a kind of place where people are passionate about causes. They have a lot of energy and a lot of um, um, ideas. And I think that sometimes we can, um, if we can contribute to that in any kind of way and use our art to help um, further people's um, ability to um, move forward in those causes, then we will. And, and I think songwriting for us, you know, we're, we're obviously, we love, we all love the same kind of dancey um, funk, disco, uh, anything that grooves, <laughs> anything that grooves, but you know, when we're writing songs, we're also bringing our own passions into the song. So that's where you can see a lot of our, the lyrics Amazing. might be, um, heavier at times or, or even, you know, lighter at times. Um, yeah, so, yeah. I, 
I love that. I, I, and I, I love that one. I just, I can just sense that you guys are so united and I, you know, in, in heart and in your love of the music that you're creating. And mm -hmm. I think that's beautiful, you know? Um, and I also just love like that. That's your message because yeah, I mean, that's what the world needs right now. We need, you know, we need a little bit of more fun. We need some <laughs> kindness. And yeah. um, I mean, you can never have enough kindness right right now. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, but, you know, and I love that you guys also get together and make a real change, you know, with these fundraisers. And so that's yeah, I'm, I'm impressed and um, <laughs> Really, really excited that that you guys can, you know, are doing that, and and you also all, also have your jobs that you, you know, other jobs aside from music, right. you know, and you're helping the world through that as well. So basically, you're superheroes. That's pretty <laughs> exciting. I don't think I am, but Preeti certainly is. No, <laughs> I know. I, I think it sounds like you both are. That's pretty pretty awesome. Um, and, uh, you know, I feel like you answered a bunch of the questions in that, you know, oh, uh, the no, that's great. You know, I said, you know, what makes the DMV so special? And you were saying about um, you were talking about the the causes, right? That mm -hmm. um, but if you wanted to get into that, what you know, how would you answer that question? Yeah, like, actually, you know, so even. Special? Oh, sorry. I'm like, oh, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> but actually, I think, too, what makes a DMV so special is, um, you know, I started singing in acapella groups like right out of college and I you know I've been singing in the in this area I've been living in this area for over 20 years and um and I just feel like this I mean I've never been in a music scene outside of DC so it's hard for me to to really comment on that but but what what I can say about the DMV is that everyone is so 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 supportive of each other mm -hmm. and you know you know most of their whether we are a professional musician, a cover band, um, you know, part-timer or hobbyist like us, I've really just felt like everybody gives so much to everybody else. Yeah. And, and together we rise, you know, as, as a yeah. scene, we have such a varied amount of uh, genres, of talents, of like, um, you know, t diversity of people participating. I mean, our scene is so rich and I think it's because of the way that we, we are as people in this scene. It's, it's, it's just about building and bringing people up. And, and I think like things like seven drum flash band, you know, like you guys, uh, capital groove collective, just these kind of these podcasts, these kind of um, venues to highlight um, the work that's being done here. That's so true um, because like, it's just great. When you think of like LA or New York or Nashville mm -hmm. that are the, you know, known to be the big hubs or whatever, um, you know, we're trying, you know, as Capital Groove Collective, our goal is to put us DMV on the map because we definitely mm -hmm. deserve it, right? So, yeah. you know, but when you think of those other places, you think of like, the first thing that comes to mind is like cutthroat, you know? Yeah, like, you know, me too. It's like the opposite, right? It, yeah. yeah. I, I'm glad that you said that. That's And um, the other, the other question is like, what would be, what would be a major shift that you would recommend? Because, you know, like, like I was saying, like, it seems like we don't receive enough credibility for how amazing we are. You know, what, what do you think that we could do to put us on, you know, on the map more, more than we are now? I think that, I mean, I would love to hear Preeti's thoughts. I'm newer to the scene. I moved to DC about five years ago and I love it here. I have hung out in the New York music scene um, and I'm from the Miami Fort Lauderdale area and it, everything that she says is true and what's unique about DC I when I came to DC I met you know the jazz scene Erin and Herb over at Mr. Henry's and Elijah and went to the Brixton and jam sessions I was in big bands with older guys and I eventually found my way to Zen met a whole new scene the guys at Capital Bop your podcasts, people are working hard to support each other. You don't wash out here and there's no attitude about it. You don't have to be a huge professional and perfect at your craft for people to come and appreciate what you do well. Right. And I love that. And I think that that 
collective in that group, you know, we've survived COVID-19 and it's been really tough. Venues are shutting down. Musicians who really do use music as putting food on their plate really suffered. And the fact that we all found ways to stick together and support each other through this is so huge. Mm -hmm. And I know that there, that those musicians are pushing local government and DC council to fund, um, you know, music from the ground up, whether that be what we played at, you know, the Labor Day Mayor's Labor Day Music Festival or housing support um, or helping these restaurants and venues stay open. You know, that's what we really need. It, it sounds, you know, nowadays, you know, everyone's asking for money, but, you know, that's really what it takes to keep a music scene thriving. We saw Gypsy Sally's clothes. It's been rough. Um, and to me, it's not the musician's fault. It's not, you know, our community is amazing. We are supporting each other. There is mentorship. What we need is people out there who have the means to support those venues and support those artists and help us keep these connections strong. Love it. Yeah. So it, yeah. I guess we're in the I right agree. track then, you know? Yeah, no, I agree with Allison. I think um, you know, we just have to continue to build each other up and stick together and continue to fight, you know, for, um, for fun, more funding. Um, you know, I know that since in the, even in the last five years, there's been huge, huge strides um, in the city in recognizing artists and funding artists and providing supports and small grants for artists if, you know, this is their primary source of income. And I think together, if we work together and continually continue to um, support that um, and push for that, I think that will everyone will sort of rise up together. Absolutely. Um, I love that, uh, you know, that, like, like you said, it sounds like we're on the right track because we are, you know, really trying to support each other and, and speak out about how important music is in general. So that's awesome. Well, speaking of, you know, COVID-19-20, as you guys know, I, as we, as we speak, I have coronavirus right now oh and um, zero out of 10 stars. It's really not a fun time, but um, I'm better, thankfully, and happy to be here. We're um, so glad that you're doing okay. <laughs> you're yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. But like, so speaking of this craziness that we've just been through and are going to continue to, you know, um, <laughs> this wild ride that 2020 has been. And um, I just want to know, like, you know, what is the biggest adjustment you've had to make? Maybe, you know, it doesn't have to be from 2020, but it seems like the general theme has been <laughs> 2020 has caused the most changes in musicians' careers. Um, but, you know, what is the biggest adjustment you, you've had to make? And, um, and what, uh, you know, how, how have you, you know, what have, how have you changed or, or have you learned anything? Have you grown mm -hmm. or uh, what, have you taken anything from this or are you just trying to get by or both? <laughs> um, so I'd, I'd love to hear more about that. Well, let me just say that Stephanie is putting at least me to shame because she is fully dressed in her DC Pride gear. I got like some makeup on. <laughs> She's probably she probably feels like shit, and I threw a t-shirt on and like put my hair in a bun. So it's a right Zip on. T-shirt though. It's a Zip yeah. Zip no, I like that. No, see, I'm wearing my CGC t-shirt. Yeah, I see. No, I'm this wearing is, like the first time I've worn like, makeup in two weeks. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, yeah. So. <laughs> wait, go ahead. Wait, I love <laughs> so Zoom. I mean, Zoom has been a huge adjustment. Yeah. I've just embraced the fact that I'm never gonna look good on it. <laughs> You look great and oh, you're thanks. rocking your merch right now. You right. That's what's important. I mean, yeah. yeah, the band, the album, I think came out differently because of COVID-19, you know, anything that grooves would have been something different. Our songs really evolved because they began as rec us all recording in the same place together. You know, I started out recording, you know, my licks in, you know, Tyler's home studio and he was sitting right there giving me feedback. 
Um, we had an audience that we were playing these tunes at. And by the end of the album, we were all recording in separate places and sending it together. And Tyler had to, you know, he decided to use this time to learn some music production and engineering um, before. And so he did a lot of work on the album. I don't know if Tyler necessarily would have put so much time into that. You know, we had some, you know, we hired some great people outside who do this for a living, but he poured a lot of his heart and soul into that. Um, one song we like to talk about is Grandpa, which was used to be just kind of a short dance break in between songs. It's now like really a fully fledged, fleshed out tune. Because, because we really of this year, you know, I, I would argue that, you know, we really took the time on our tunes and played with different ideas and turned it into a song. Um, ben, as Preeti mentioned, he wrote a lot of amazing licks and I was really happy to do justice to those licks. He's in Canada and we thought, well, if we're all sending in our lines, why don't we write to Ben and see if he wants to jump back on the album? And so he has some really incredible solos on this thing. And so, so you, that's the like album was transformed. Then. That was yeah. like you and him are both doing trumpets. Mm -hmm. Cool. Totally. Yeah. And, and, you know, at the end of the day, this album turned into something we would use to get gigs and be promotional and maybe try to sell at some concerts um, yeah. to memorializing who the band was this year, a project to keep the band mm -hmm. together, even as we were being safe in our separate homes and oh, yeah. something that was more important because our fans, there aren't many, <laughs> but there the fans some. that we have, you know, they said, you know, we can't come see you at shows. How do we hear your music? And no, now we have this beautiful album. You got yeah. it. And so <laughs> yes. we just hope people put it on and, you know, dance at home and listen to it on their bike rides and just use it to get out of this isolating space. And so COVID, you know, you asked us how we transformed, but, See, and yeah, I think you can, it sounds like, it, you yeah. Know. Yeah, and we hope it does that for you, Stephanie. Oh, no, <laughs> yeah, for COVID. I, I've really, really enjoyed listening to this because I, I actually yeah. just put it on while I was preparing and I almost got yeah. through the whole thing. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, that's definitely like, because waking up and finally starting to feel a bit more like myself, you know? Yeah. Um, like I want to be motivated. I want to get back to work. And then listening to this album that's totally groovy and chill, like, and like this, but also pumps you up a little bit. I've been to like a Scott concert. Um, Pantheon Rococo is like awesome band um and I remember we were all just like jumping up and down and I'm like a really like small town girl <laughs> like <laughs> sheltered little girl but so so it's like but my husband's more of the rock guy but it's like it's fun when I like get into that groove and um and that's that's what this reminds me of this brings back those memories of like do of that and that energy and that so I I really like yeah I think that that does do that for me and um this last sort of last question um, that, uh, you know, that, well, maybe, um, but yeah, that like for me personally, this is like a personal question that I want to ask everyone that I get to talk to um, is, you know, meant the whole thing about mental health. I know that that sounds like that's something that you guys are all about, you know, giving good vibes and being kind and mm -hmm. um, sort of helping people cheer people up. So I really appreciate that. I want to know, like, you personally, like, I, you know, what's, what's the person behind the, behind the band? Like, um, you know, what's, what are you guys doing to take care of your own mental health? I mean, it doesn't have to necessarily be as a musician, but as a person. Mm -hmm. um, That's a and, good question. Yeah, like, you know, or supporting others and or, um, but I want to hear I from mean, each of you. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's, uh, it's a hard question. You can might hear some kids in the background here because your kids? I'm because <laughs> I'm a mother. Oh, and, me too. So yeah, uh, um, I'm a mother who's oh, like me. an I'm amazing distant. kid. <laughs> <laughs> I've distance. Um, um, yeah, I have an, um, a nine year old. Um, he's I, the best. I he, am a huge fan of him. <laughs> don't get me started. Um, okay, and he and my daughter need to get together. So. <laughs> And he's a drummer too. Yeah, he plays drums too no from seven. Yeah, he, and he does. sings and sings and sings. Well, anyway, so I, you know, with with between distance learning and you know, I work from home right now, but sometimes I have to go into the hospital and I help, you know, in healthcare setting. I'm a I do clinical research, so there's that. Wow. And then um, 
you know, and then there's trying to do everything else. It's been a really hard year. It, it's like, I say it's the year where I simultaneously did the least and the most. Like I, yes. I can't even figure out like some days I'm like, I'm not driving him to a million baseball practices or whatever. But on the other hand, I'm super stressed and busy. Like, it's like, I don't know. I feel that deeply. Um, yeah. Um, and it's been hard not to gig, honestly, because that has been a really tough thing for our band. We we love to play. We yeah. used to have at least a concert a month. And I mean, we're not professionals. We're, you know, a, a hobby, you know, hobby band, I guess what you'd say, um, because we have other jobs. But, but we still like to perform. Um, and play out as much as we can one or two times a month. So it's been really difficult. I mean, our last performance besides the one that I mentioned at Jam and Java was um, in March. So um, after that, it's been, you know, it's been really like someone cut off your arm or something like yeah. some major part of you is, is that's been a stress relief so for have so you, long. Have you it's addressed that, you know, like, I mean, it's hard. I mean, we've, we tried to just pour, like Allison said, just pour everything into the album, Love you it. know, um, recording more tracks ourselves at home, listening to tracks and really working together as a band. To, Our guitar uh, player has encouraged yeah. us to try to write, you know, original tunes yeah. to bring to the band yeah. once we're together. That's a so we've idea. been, yeah, and we've been trying, I think now we're starting to look forward um, to, to move forward um, to think about maybe yeah. we could start to gig again at some point and how do sure. we start writing some new music remotely and things like that. So, so that's sort of been so your therapy is like is almost, you know, continuing to find ways to keep yeah. your music, you know, instead of saying, well, we just have to sit and wait, you're like, no, we're going to do what we can do. And that kind of yeah. helps your mental health. And that's what it sounds like. Yeah. And also I've been doing a lot of other projects. Um, so uh, personally, so I sing on, I've sang back up on a few other people's things. I got together with my cool. old college acapella group. I feel like you can promote people. them here, Preeti. Like we yeah, talked yeah, about yeah, the yeah, DC yeah, music yeah, scene. Alumni. The DC <laughs> music scene is supportive of each other. Like Absolutely. <laughs> so yeah. Who are so they? We've, we started, so we started, um, my old uh, college alumni uh, acapella group started creating our own videos and parodies of songs. What are they called? Rip the GW Troubadours. Um, GW so, Troubadours, cool. Yeah, yeah. So we got to so look them all next, up as well. Yeah, yeah. on the next <laughs> podcast. Yeah, we started sending real. out. It was kind of funny because we did, our alumni song is the songs by James Taylor. And um, so we just had a Zoom call and we thought, oh, it'd be so fun to um, just record our parts. So we all recorded our parts for that song. And somebody in our, um, somebody in our group is, is like a, a really good with like media and stuff and put it together into oh. like all of us. Give and me their James number. Taylor, <laughs> James Taylor re, um, whatever it is, like Instagrammed it or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. That's amazing. Yeah. And we were on, we were featured in a CNET story. So it was like, or CNBC story. Sorry. Not hey, CNET. that's amazing. So there, yeah, it was that's super great. random. I know it was like, I am. I so it. James Taylor actually has like Instagram things where he will highlight various like um, covers that his fans are doing. And so well, we were one beautiful. of them. I know it was, it was crazy. I was like, wow, we're like super famous for one second. <laughs> I know that's um, I mean that that's, yeah, that no, stuff was, adds up fun. you know that's gonna continue to elevate you Allison I'm curious what would you um you know if you could talk about you know how how have you taken care of your your mental health you know it's a great time. question it's so important um it's been tough I think you know shout out to Tyler Roberto Phil um our new drummer Emery you know Again, like Preeti said, having the band, texting, knowing that there's music to look forward to and thinking about all the things to look forward to has been helpful. Mm -hmm. When COVID is over, I have just as much anxiety about what's going to happen because I think <laughs> everyone's just going to be outside partying. There's, you know, we're going to be over each other's houses every night. Tear down the walls. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to that. And I find like having something to look forward to is great. And it also helps you appreciate, you know, the now. Uh, and yeah. I think being available for friends and family is 
you know, what I can offer. I don't have kids and uh, deeply enjoy that. Uh, <laughs> but it means I have time for family and friends and whether it's yeah. on the phone and staying in touch and remembering the world outside, it's important. And frankly, you know, I don't want to make the album sound over important when I say we want people to listen to it and feel empowered. But that being said, well, it's not? the small, <laughs> it's, no, I mean, it's the <laughs> small it's the small things right now that are really treasure, mm -hmm. treasured. And so just going outside and taking a walk and clearing your head, yeah, it, that is, sure. yeah. it feels so huge. Like, like listening to your favorite, favorite band, it feels huge. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. so that, and then, you know, I've found myself actually staying away from social media more. I think that like yeah. Zoom and the pandemic has brought back this culture of actually picking up the phone and talking to people. <laughs> Amen. Um, yeah, that's true. So that's helpful. Uh, yeah. So Love exercise, it. getting outside, staying in front of friends, you know, less social media, more face-to-face -face conversations. That being mm -hmm. said, follows and worship. GW yeah. Yes. <laughs> but okay. Got it. Well, I was going to ask, you know, yeah, where can, <laughs> we've got to uh, wrap this up. Cause I wish, I feel like I could talk to you guys for a long time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I want to know more about your drummer son and get him and my daughter together. I want to know more <laughs> yeah, about the things you do, Allison. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, but I guess I just want to, um, want to like, thank you guys. Thank you Zen Worship for being here. Um, a shout out to your band members who aren't here, but really sounds like you guys are really tight knit family, which um, yeah. you have a great cause and your music's awesome. So it's like you you got the full package here. So really, really happy to have met you today. Um, so yeah, where can we find you on social media when we do get on, um, on the rare moments that we should? <laughs> so yeah, please tell me. I think we're, we're mostly active on Facebook. I'd say cool. um, we do post a lot of like little videos and clips and like we just posted one with our fans dancing to Starts With L. Um, so we, oh, we, I saw that, we yeah. yeah, we just, we do a little stuff like that, but, um, and so that's where you can find like the latest stuff. And, but then we've also, you know, we're also pretty, um, active on Instagram. And so I guess those two and Twitter places and Twitter. So yeah. So if, we, if things are coming out, we'll let you know via Twitter and Zen. We're not yeah. spamming you, you know, again, we're not wanting people on social a, media all the time, right. but yeah, at Zen Worship Band, at Zen Worship is what you want to look for. And that's Fantastic. Worship with an A. Worship with an A. Yeah, yeah, like a warship. Like, yes, a Like warship. on Soul. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's great. So now we have oh. that image because everyone's just seen that movie. That's perfect timing. <laughs> Our war so, on boredom. Yeah. <laughs> war on boredom, war on <laughs> sadness. I love it. Um, Thank you so much for being here. Again, this is, oh, hold on. I need to find our intro. So. <laughs> this is the DC Music Rocks presented by Capital Groove Collective, an independent artist collective focused on elevating and highlighting the diversity of DMV artists and blossoming DMV music scene. Thank you so much for being here. And I'm Stephanie Mathias, your host. Talk to you soon. Bye.
Freedom. 